Hello everyone, The Flying Scotsman here and welcome to episode 7 of The Flying Scotsman's Christmas. Now, some of you will remember that um, summer 2018 um, I went in to have my throat slit by some English guy. He was a surgeon or something, and yeah, yeah, don't remember it, blacked out. Uh, must have been, must have put some nice, uh, nice juice in me or something. No, they did it. Well, it was uh, parathyroid surgery, actually. <laughs> it wasn't just, um, it wasn't just like some random guy, a way to slit my throat or anything, don't worry about it. What a brilliant, very cheerful and festive start to this video. Sorry, I just have a very dark sense of humour, and um, considering I now have a scar across my neck, um, I I can only see the funny side in that, and, and basically, you know, just go around telling people some English guy tried to slit my throat. <laughs> Sorry, I know, I know, I know, it's, it's very bad, I know, it's parathyroidectomy, um, double parathyroidectomy. <sighs> right, okay, anyway, enough of the uh, surgery. And uh, let's, um, well, how does any of that fit in with this? Well, to be honest, it really doesn't. I've just wasted your time. And I show no remorse at all. Now I'm getting on. So, how does any of that fit in with this laptop sat here? Well, I knew I was going to be going into hospital. And while I was in the hospital, well, I wanted to stay at Penumbra while I was at the hospital, if, if you know what I mean, you know, I'd go from Penumbra to hospital and I'd come back from hospital to Penumbra, you know, so it all happened, you know, on the, on the week. Absolutely fine, you know, I'd get support there and, you know, someone might be there if I were to suddenly, oh, I don't know, get bored and decide, hey, I, I've got a brilliant idea, I'm going to drop dead or <laughs> I'm going to fall desperately ill or something like that or yeah. Now, I had been, the, the previous trip I'd had to Penumbra was actually Christmas of 2017, which is absolutely fine. But, um, it was, well, yeah, it was Christmas 2017, well, it was, um, Christmas 2017, I had my ThinkPad T430 with me, and I, I did like to play a few games on it. But, it only had a small screen, 14.1, no, 14.0 inches rather, um, widescreen. It was a 1366 by 768 model, but it was still too small to see games. So I thought, well, you know, I've had the T420, I've had the T430, maybe it's time for me to go back to 15 inch machines. So I had a look online, had a look at the T5, uh, 40p because I thought well you know if I'm upgrading my laptop I may as well get an actual upgrade while I'm at it you know just just get some kind of tangible upgrade so you know moving from Ivy Bridge to Haswell looked at the T540p doesn't support using a, an MSATA SSD as your primary hard disk I think if anything it's if it supports anything it's cache SSDs um, so it's either MSATA or M.2 I can't mind uh, I know someone will correct me. So, I thought, well, yeah, to be honest, I like having an optical drive. I still use it. I actually was using it the other day at Aberdeen Action on Disability. I was using this optical drive. And, um, mm. very nice. So, yeah, I was using this optical drive. So, I, I do obviously still use an optical drive. Yeah, I know, I've just said that a million times. So, you know, I didn't want to have to sacrifice that to put a hard disk and an SSD in there, because I obviously wanted an SSD, but I quite like having enough room for data as well. So, I had a look at um, Dell Latitudes. I'd had, I previously have had Dell Latitudes before, you've seen them all on the channel, I've, and I've even had them as my main laptop, a D630, an E6500. People might not like those machines, but I used them, and I was actually quite happy with them. 
even though the 6500 was hell of a slow. Probably because the hard drive that was in there is a bit mined. But uh, no matter. So, you know, I put, um, I had a look at um, 6540s. I'd heard that Dell's quality, which had been lacking in the 60E60X20s and E60X30s, had actually um, came back up again for these uh, Haswell machines, the 60X40s. So I thought I would take the plunge and um, I bought myself this wee beauty. Um, cost me, I think, a couple of hundred quid. I got the ThinkPad T4. 30 for way too cheap, £144 in 2016. That's way too cheap for UK prices anyway. And I love it. It has been through thick and thin with me. And what I really love about it is that I had a small disagreement with a drip. When I was in hospital, I, I was in hospital last March, I got taken in emergency because my parathyroid levels were way too high. Um, so, you know, calcium blood level was up in the sky. Um, so they needed to put a uh, pump me full of saline. Um, now, I needed to get up and use the bathroom in the night and I needed to take the drip with me. I put left my laptop on the table and next thing I know, you know, I'd got disentangled and next thing I know, the laptop went crashing to the floor. Guess what, folks? Absolutely, positively fine. Not even a scratch. I mean, it just, it just has regular signs of wear and tear. It's, this machine is a legend. It really is. It has, been, it has been solid as a rock, which is why I wanted to feature it in this year's The Flying Scotsman Christmas. I love it. I think... If it was any best, if it was any more perfect, it'd have AMD RX graphics in it, which would be crazy because they went around then. <laughs> but um, you can get one with AMD graphics, which is fine if you use Windows, not necessarily if you use Linux because it's hybrid. Uh, the AMD graphics goes through the Intel graphics. It's, it's a bit dirty how it works, but um, it's so you need both installed at the same time and run. Um, and I would love that version of the machine, but no matter, this is the version I have. And it's, well, it's it's still, it's, it's basically the best a laptop can be, as, certainly for the time. So, let's have a look around it then. So, starting on the left side, we have... This, um, we have a Kensington lock port, HDMI port. Now, this I found a bit odd because its contemporaries and its predecessors use DisplayPort, which does seem to be slightly better than HDMI. But HDMI has HDCP and all that nonsense included. So yeah, there, there is that. Yeah, HDMI. And then you have a USB 3 port. Event, if we look on the front, we will see a um, SD card reader. That's something else that I have used, actually, because I use it with the AAD's digital SLR camera sometimes. And then on the right, we see the aforementioned optical drive. And, well, it's a Dell Latitude. I can do this. Um, a Blu-ray drive is something that I wouldn't mind having internally on this, but it's not the end all be all as I do have an external Blu-ray drive. So yeah, this is hot swappable. You can put hard disks in it, extra batteries, um, I believe, or even <laughs> optical drives or even just a travel light module. So there you go. Um, turn this into an Ultrabook. Um, then you've got a combined headphone microphone socket and two more USB 3 parts, even though they're coloured black, I believe they are still USB 3. Um, and a fourth one. So yeah, you have four USB parts on this machine in total. I forget about this one, I always do. Um, then you've got Ethernet. 
which is uh, hell of a useful. VGA out and power. So there's no express card slot as, as uh, far as I know. Nope, there isn't. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh no, I thought I'd found a scratch, but no, no, no. What, what I do have here is, I don't know if this is active because it seems to have a blanking plate in it, but um, a smart card reader. <laughs> I thought that was a scratch. I, I thought that was where the paint had kind of chipped off. <laughs> so, let's plug it in. Because the one thing I will say, the battery on this machine is, is not necessarily its, its strength. The machine. Never made. So, here we are. The, um, machine is open another criticism i have is the rubber palm rest it always things get caught in it crumbs bits of dust and it just feels a bit dirty and yeah and obviously we all know that it will turn to goo in years to come but apart from that you know you can obviously Obviously, you've got a nice, comfortable, uh, you know, it's nice and comfortable to type on. Obviously, this machine has a number pad as well. Very useful to have. Um, you have uh, volume, mute, down and up buttons. And a very dusty 15.6 inch IPS LED display. And this model of machine, it is actually a full HD display, 1080p. Um, you've got indicator lights here for um, Wi-Fi, I think number lock, caps lock, well, number lock, Wi-Fi and battery. And you also have a power button with an LED in it. So, yeah, let's... Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will. Um, the screen is nice, if a bit blue biased, if I'm honest. Um, because earlier this year I was ordering some paint and I thought it was kind of a, a purple colour, but it turns out it was. We got it and it was literally kind of a candy pink colour. So it was, it was uh, this colour that I wanted, and I know that looks a bit pink. Yeah, it's purple. That's 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 an accurate approximation of what the colour is, depending on what screen you've got. And um, well, it looks pink, and it looks pink on my phone as well, which was odd. It was just a completely different colour. So, so there we go. Nice, almost Christmassy background on here. Now with this machine, I like to use a mouse, and the mouse in question is an MX Logitech MX uh, Five something or other um i'm not too keen on this mouse really i mean one of the buttons doesn't work right it does have four way scroll it's a nice comfortable mouse but to be honest i want to be able to have macro keys like i can with the g series software i can't use uh the logitech um gamer mouse software i forget what that's called i have to use set point instead and i can't even set the magnification to these uh buttons on the mouse so it's it's, yeah, but if you just want a mouse, mouse, this, this will not steer you wrong. Important previous session, really. Didn't think I had a previous session in here, if I'm honest, but uh, never mind. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just getting slightly distracted because um, it brings up a silly little widget that um, I don't. I don't really want uh, on there. I don't really want my kids associating with it. I don't have kids. Anyway, yeah. Uh, power to go mobile up. Very nice. Uh, yeah. Power to go. Several and central drive. Start program on Windows starts. And. 
Ah, yeah, that's that's what I want. That's what I wanted all along, you see. Um, no, don't want that. Stop it! Yeah. I'm, I'm not doing well. There we go. And there's power ISO. So, what are the specs of this machine? Well, why don't we have a look? Clicking on the wrong thing. That's 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 well. I'm, I'm doing well. Right. Okay. So this is obviously it's Windows 10. Uses an Intel Core i5 4300M CPU at 2.6 gigahertz, 8 gigs of RAM. I know that's not much and could do with more, but that's what I have. 64-bit operating system, x64 processor, and uh, no pen or touch input is available. Windows is activated. I'm really glad that Windows is activated. Um, this machine has the built-in Bluetooth, which is very handy. Um, we've got an integrated webcam, something that my T430 didn't have. Um, got, um, well, this is using um, dual disk. I can put an MSATA SSD in here, so I have. It's a light on 250 gig affair. And a Seagate one terabyte hybrid drive is my data drive. Display. Adapter as well, it's Intel HD Graphics 4600, not bad, can play some games, not necessarily others. Uh, Mats, uh, Matsushita DVD, I, uh, DVD plus minus RW, um, UJ8E2, um, obviously we have, oh yeah, and something else that we have on this machine, we have an airplane mode switch. So. You know, if I was on a, a hairy plane, then I could just flick the switch and all the wireless radios installed in this machine would be switched off. That's very good of it. Um, Logitech USB input device. Yeah, that's because I'm using Logitech mouse. Um, yeah. Intel 8 series chipset family SATA AHCI controller. Um, Mies, Dell touchpad, HID compliant mouse, monitor, network adapter, we've got Centrino N, uh, Intel Centrino N wireless and Ethernet, uh, <coughs> LPT printer port, which naturally there isn't one, and uh, Intel active management technology. Yeah. And then of course the CPU, which is dual core hyper threaded. Um, and Realtek High Definition Audio. So that's all what this machine has in it. So what can I do on this computer? Well, I can, um, I can take it around with me and I can do stuff. Uh, <laughs> so um, I, I, often, I often use it in the course of volunteering. And it's good for traveling, as, we've, as I found out. I uh, took it down the road with me this year, went down to England in the summer, took it with me. It's perfect com uh, travelling companion, as has my Dell Venue Pro tablet, which I will be doing a video about at some point. Um, <clears throat> yes, and I'm running ESET on here, which I do have uh, a licence, I need to activate it. Um, I have been able to do video editing as well, so that is good, that's uh, it's nice. And I can order carry outs using the um, Just Eat app. Kyocera Print Center, blah blah blah, Microsoft My Young. So we do have some games that we can play on here, and we have others as well. Um, okay, so I have, um, well I have Origin. It's not installed just yet. I've actually um, recently plugged this laptop with a fresh coat, uh, a fresh coat of Windows reinstallation. If I'm honest, um, so not everything is installed, which is brilliant. But um, excuse me, 
I do have um, GLG Galaxy and Steam all installed. I don't need GLG Galaxy, but it's a nice kind of storefront and way to grab all my games. But good old games allows me to play some uh, older games on my current uh, system. So, um, well, allow me to demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about. So, I, I'm away to install Rayman. Uh, in fact, it's, it's just installing now. It's just downloading, installing, configuring. And there we go. Now, what that'll do is that'll open up a DOSBox uh, window. It's all been nicely configured. You design a level if I wanted to. I don't know why the sound is scratchy on this. I honestly, I <clears throat> I think sometimes I do prefer playing it on original hardware. But you know, I mean, if I, if I wanted to play this, you know, and I didn't mind the scratchier sound, then that's not a problem. I could always disable the sound. So, once I'm in the game, it seems absolutely hideous, but never mind. No, once I'm in the game, I mean, the game will itself will play absolutely fine. <coughs> so I'll take it to, um, yeah. Oh. I don't know what all that was about. That was a bit weird. The guitar. Day. Dee dee dee. Normally it should go. Dee 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 dee. <laughs> Ding. You can tell I've played this game too much. And on the PlayStation version, you get um, the things make um, notes sounds instead of uh, crackling sounds like on here. It's not like you're walking along going, look, smithers, crackleberries. What is this? Oh. That was some music for the level, which needs to be the wrong music and start halfway through. <coughs> At least this music is correct. This is a Battle of the Fairy movie, uh, music. Bones of life. Motor plum. <laughs> I know that's not a plum, but it. It, it kind of looks like one. <clears throat> I 
I love some of these um, weapons. It's like, imagine having a gun that shoots a fist. I mean, that, that was just beautiful, seriously. Like, oi! Oi! Wah! That, oh, I, I, I went for swimming lessons. Uh, or I didn't. Rayman, you should have... Why did Rayman's parents not take him out for swimming lessons? You can You know, just... Seriously. And this laptop can actually edit video, and it probably is going to be counted on to edit a lot of uh, TFS Christmas video, if I'm going to be completely honest. Um, I'm going to get you. And you. And you. Enjoy being up in the air. Is the taller ones are fine, it's the wee ones of these you gotta look out for. The fly wee buggers, see that? They're basically just duck. You can't get them. They're just they're, they're just wee bastards, so they are. Okay. Motor plum again. Well, it will be once it's uh, once I've launched it into the water. There we go. I've got a life and a pea. That's power-ups that you get more hit points essentially uh before before you uh hit the bu uh, before you hit the bucket kick the bucket ah! yeah so so if i did something stupid like that see i would have died Thank you! That's a questionable noise, if ever I heard one. Yeah, he finds it funny. Obviously, I can go back and do these levels again as I get more power-ups and able to find more cages. Locked electons! Yay! There's a few of the electons! This is a bit Nicholas Sturgeon of do. She would know. So that's what you can do with good old games. But what about with um, what about on Steam? Well, you can play some earlier Grand Theft Auto games. I, I, I definitely would not advise playing some of the newer ones. Um, but you can obviously play some of the uh, earlier ones um, which need direct play which uh, Windows actually now will install itself if it detects that it needs it And even on, even even on Intel HD graphics, forty six hundred, I can play this in sparkling high definition. Not that it really presents a high definition image; it just it just kind of uh, spits it out in ten eighty p. Right, what have I got to do now? That went well. Tony, Tony, Tony. So, yeah, that's that's uh, GTA three.
And I can even cheat and get the police off my back. I, I, uh, I believe that's... Ah! I can do more cheats and make fireworks happen. Yep, and people have got, you know, dead people cough up money and weapons, so. Oh, great, my Uber's here. Let, let me just, uh, let me just uh, go see to that. Did I say Uber? What I meant is I nicked an ambulance. Now you're a pancake. So that's Grand Theft Auto 3. I'm not going to do a mission just now. But what if I wanted to play something a bit more modern? Can I do that? <laughs> Can't quite believe this myself, folks. But apparently, I can. I mean... I can't play this in a high definition resolution. Um, and obviously this has got to install the visual C++ redistributable package, because of course it does. But... And it's probably going to hate me for doing this. That's not something I really do. Uh, but here is Crash Bandicoot and Sync Trilogy. Did you look at that? Swash. <laughs> For some reason it's not wanting to... Oh, there we go, there we go. Now it's in full screen. Yeah, you see now this this has taken a while. Normally that's quite a seamless Activision presents a smashing blast from the past developed by Vicarious Visions. Whereas this is it's actually loading that part on here. It's 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 not happy, but it will play. It will actually play. Oh this game. This is why I bought it on the uh, Bubligard. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have I have this horrible Yeah. Yeah it is. It's it's defaulted itself back to ten eighty P. What do you think that's gonna do? It has I could put it to set three twenty by two forty. So, I mean, this this will literally go to literally DOS resolutions if I want them. Why would I want that? 30 frames a second maximum. And... There we go. So, as you can see, <laughs> this is actually a lot better, even if the widescreen resolution just is, is not the best. So as you can tell, the fan has basically completely ramped itself up. 
I mean, it's it's not very loud. It's not like the ThinkPad T430 fan, which would basically drone on and on. But, um, oh, I, th I think this is, um, I think this has synchronized itself from, uh, from my Steam. It must, uh, yeah, it must do that. Because there's no way I did all this on here. That I just didn't. So let's play a level of Jungle Rollers, why not? But I'm here showing that you can run Crash Bandicoot on absolute garbage. It's not as weird playing Crash Bandicoot on the keyboard as you might, as I might have thought. Probably because I've used PlayStation emulators back in the day. And, yeah. You. But I am, for some reason, getting the buttons mixed up. Oh, see what I mean? Like when you uh, used to drive in European cars and then you get a Japanese car and you're uh, turned in the corner signalling with your windscreen wipers. It's like, that's not going to work. Well, hey! Yeah, I, I might have done well in the PC version of this game. <laughs> 99 lives. I can promise you I've not done anywhere near as well on the Switch version of it. I, I just haven't. But, um, yeah. I used a game controller as well, which I think I will be taking. Yeah. Oh dear, I, I seem to have died it. Why why did I die did 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 Okay, so that's Crash Bandicoot. I'm not, <laughs> not going to embarrass myself anymore. Um, you know, it's not like I've been playing a game for 20 years. Oh, wait. That's not correct. Well, I think that will do it for this video. So this is the Dell Latitude E6540. 
Would I recommend buying one? Well, Haswell, getting a bit long in the teeth, but it is still useful. Um, so, you know, if, if, if you can find one cheap and it's what you can afford, then absolutely, definitely, definitely, definitely get one. Um, I, I very much like this machine. It's a perfect, well, it's a business machine, is what it is. So while it may not be the best at gaming, it does, it can do at least some gaming. And, you know, it's not too bad. It's, it's really not too bad. I, I do like this machine very much. So, I think I will be away now. Um, but I'd like to thank you all for watching this video. And please join me for the next episode of TFS Christmas 2019. Judy, bye.